Now our power supply is really in pretty good shape. We can lower the voltage using the transformer and use one, two, or four diodes to change it from AC into DC. But we're not through with our power supply yet. We still have another problem. Remember I said that all of the computers in our games require five volts DC to operate. That five volts DC has to be exact. It can't vary very much. You have a tolerance of about a quarter of a volt either way, but that's really about it. Well, if we look at a graph of our output from our power supply now, we can see that it's still pulsating DC. That is, the voltage still drops to zero every 120th of a second. To help maintain a constant voltage to a game computer or a sound system, we use a part called a capacitor. This is a typical capacitor from an Atari power supply. The capacitor is this blue device right here. The capacitor is like a short-term battery that accepts a charge when there's power available to it, but when the power output from the diodes drops down to zero, the capacitor takes over and keeps that voltage constant across the rest of the devices in the game, such as the computer or the sound system. Here are some common schematic symbols for capacitors. The drawing on the left is the one you'll see most often. The others are variations of the first symbol. You'll notice that some of the capacitor symbols are marked with a plus sign on one end. Many capacitors are polarized, which means that, like a battery, there's a positive end and a negative end. If a capacitor is polarized, it will be marked with a plus or minus sign. It's easy to understand how a capacitor works if we do this simple experiment. I'm going to connect this capacitor to this lantern battery. When I connect the red clip lead, which is the positive lead of the battery, to the positive terminal of the capacitor, the capacitor should now be fully charged. It doesn't take very long to charge the capacitor. If I disconnect the battery now and connect it to this lamp, we should see the capacitor discharge across the lamp. And we should see the lamp glow very bright for a brief period of time and then dim out as the capacitor discharges. Watch. Pretty neat, huh? Well, let's connect this capacitor to our full wave center tap power supply and see how it operates in a normal working circuit. The positive lead of the capacitor, which you can identify by the straight horizontal line and the positive sign, is connected to the positive output of the diodes. We know this is the positive output because the two cathodes are tied together. The negative lead of the capacitor is grounded. Do you see the resistor that's been added to the output of the power supply? The resistor is labeled RL. This stands for load resistor. The load resistor represents whatever it is that the power supply will be powering. It could be a logic board or a sound system or a monitor circuit or just about anything else that uses direct current. Anything that provides power in a circuit is called the source. Anything that uses the power provided by the source is called the load. Let's look at the power supply now and see how it works. When the output voltage from the diodes is at its peak, current flows not only through the load, but into the capacitor as well. This charges the capacitor to the same voltage as the peak voltage coming from the diodes. When the voltage from the diodes drops, the capacitor, which is now fully charged, takes over to keep the voltage constant across the load. The capacitor acts as both a load and a source in a power supply. First it takes the current in as it charges, and then it becomes a source as it provides current to the load when the voltage from the diodes drops to zero. Well, as a result of adding the capacitor, the power supply no longer drops to zero volts every 120th of a second. A graph of the power supply would now look like this. The peaks and valleys have been filtered out by adding the capacitor. In fact, we call a capacitor that's used this way in a power supply a filter capacitor. This graph shows what we'd like to see from a filtered power supply, a straight line that exactly duplicates the constant voltage of a battery. However, we're rarely so lucky in the real world. Because there's current being drawn from the battery during the time interval between pulses of current, the capacitor's voltage does drop a little between pulses. A graph of the filtered DC output 
might look something like this. The small fluctuation in voltage is something called power supply ripple, or hum. The term ripple comes from the fact that it looks like a rippled line when we see it in graph form, as we would if we were looking at the power supply with an oscilloscope. It's called hum because an audio system that's being powered by a power supply with excessive ripple will create a noticeable hum from the speaker. Finding a bad filter capacitor can really be a traumatic experience for some people, and it can be an impossibility for others. The fact of the matter is, though, that it's really easy to diagnose a bad filter capacitor. We'll be looking at the power supply filter capacitor test a little later on in the course. 